Sometimes in between big projects, I'll try to clean up my attic and tidy my stuff up. Wiping away the fiber dust from the previous project, sorting out the yarns that the kids play with while I weave, or organizing the tools and supplies so that they are back in the right places again. I'll try to pause and remember how long I've had something or where it came from. I try to remember to be thankful for the equipment and the tools that I get to use. I've said this before, but none of this equipment, none of these looms appeared in my life overnight. All these bits and pieces of equipment and stash are accumulated for more than 16 years of working with yarn, fiber, knitting, weaving, spinning, and dyeing. I just reflect on this now because I know that not everybody who's watching will have these same tools or yarns or looms that I'm working with. Sometimes it's hard to get traction, especially with spinning and weaving tools that are larger and more expensive. With knitting or crochet, you could get started with a hook and a pair of needles and a ball of yarn. But with weaving, not only do you need the loom, but you need shuttles and bobbins and then a bobbin winder and then a threading hook, a slaying hook, a warping board, lee sticks, a rattle, and then it just goes on and on. With spinning, you also need a wheel and then bobbins and then maybe more bobbins because you want to work on more than one project at a time. And then there's fiber and the lazy Kate and the pile just grows and grows. At the School of Sweet Georgia, I made a workshop called the Multicraftual Mindset. And I put in there some information about encouraging people when it comes to building up the equipment and the gear that you need in order to do these crafts. The idea is to just do a little bit at a time, buy the best that you can afford, buy better quality so that it lasts longer, and then just be patient. Now, we are finally doing something that I've been wanting to do for a long time now. We are creating a scholarship fund for the School of Sweet Georgia as a way of kickstarting fiber artists in their journey. This scholarship will be open and available for applications from current School of Sweet Georgia All Access members, and you can find the application form at the link down below in the description box. With this scholarship, we are going to provide a $750 gift certificate. That's in Canadian dollars, $750. And it will be a gift certificate to the Sweet Georgia shop for the scholarship recipient to apply towards looms or spinning wheels or books or yarn or fiber. Now, in order to fund this scholarship project, we are going to be launching a series of SOS, or School of Sweet Georgia, merch, of which the profits will go towards those scholarship recipients. So the idea is that the more merch we can sell, the bigger the scholarship fund can become, and the more fiber artists and creators we can support. The first piece of merch we are going to be creating is SOS branded aprons. These are going to be slate colored with a lovely School of Sweet Georgia logo on the front. We chose a dark color so that this apron could be easily used for dyeing, but it could also be used for spinning. So if you spin with an apron or a lap cloth, it can really help to have a darker color underneath your hands and on your lap so that you can see your fiber better if you're working with lighter colored fiber. Now these aprons will have a couple of pockets as well, so it'll be nice uh, for putting your pens or a notepad. And if you're anything like me, I am constantly looking for a pen and paper to write down random weaving notes that I will likely lose later. <laughs> but if you're not a pen and paper person, you can also pop your cell phone in the pockets too. So that works. This is just the first thing that we've decided to make and pre-orders of the aprons are now live on our shop website at sweetgeorgiayarns.com. We are completely open to ideas about what you would like in the way of SOS or Sweet Georgia merch, either t-shirts or mugs or more fiber specific things like the spinning gauge or the weaving tool that we made. We are totally totally open to ideas. Our plan is for this to be an ongoing project where we can continue to fund more scholarships as the line of merch grows and evolves. So if you are interested in applying for the SOS scholarship and wanting to use the funds towards a piece of gear or a piece of equipment that you don't actually see on our Sweet Georgia website right now, you can most definitely reach out to us about it. We carry equipment from Shacked Spindle, from Ashford, Leclerc Looms, Louette, but we don't necessarily have a product page for every single item in each of their catalogs. So if you want something that you just don't see, just you can let us know and we can get that for you. So applications for the scholarship are open now until March 1st, 2022. We are going to review all of the applications and then make our selections before March 15th, 2022. And then the recipients 
students will get to kickstart their own fiber arts journeys this spring. In the applications, we are really going to be interested in seeing how scholarship applicants might share their love of the fiber arts with others, either through teaching or creating content in some way. So this doesn't mean that we are necessarily looking for people who are doing the fiber arts as professionals, but we really want to help grow, strengthen, and build this fiber arts community. And so we want to support makers who are also actively trying to share and grow the community as well. Okay, so that is basically it for today. It's a very short message this week, but if you like this message, please do hit the like button. And I really encourage you to share this video with your friends, with anyone who you think might be able to participate and apply for a scholarship. Thank you so much for being here today, and I hope that you'll come back next week when we'll talk more about color and craft. I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.